Hey guys and welcome to another one of my science videos. Today I show you how to safely extract the flyback transformer from a CRT. But what is a flyback transformer? And what is a CRT? A flyback transformer is a special kind of high voltage, high frequency transformer that has three coils instead of the usual two. They can output in AC or most commonly DC. They can be extracted from cathode ray tubes, CRTs, which are big old fat TVs, to create high voltage arcs between 10 to 30 kilovolts at around 4 to 15 milliamps. They can be used for all sorts of projects. They also need a special type of driver to run them, which I'll explain as we get to it. But before we start, I just want to say that you are doing this at your own risk, as there are lots of hazards such as glass implosion and electrocution. I cannot be held responsible if you injure, injure yourself doing this. Right, let's get started. Okay, firstly you're going to need a CRT. You may already have one. If not, just ask around, friends, family, particularly grandparents, as they sometimes still have one sitting in their loft or something. It doesn't matter if it's a computer monitor or a TV, they'll both work. The only difference is that the computer monitor will output at a higher frequency. Once you have one, you'll need to unscrew the back and take it off. Please make sure it's not plugged in when you're doing this. This is what the inside looks like. Note, you'll need to do this next part outside. Please don't touch any of the insides of it. The majority of the space is taken up by the big black cone shaped thing. This thing itself acts like a capacitor and can still hold a lethal charge in it, even if the TV hasn't been turned on in years. So we're going to need to discharge it before we can safely get the flyback transformer out of it. To discharge it, we're going to need to make what's called a chicken stick. For this, you're going to need a long pole made out of something non-conductive. Remember, wood can be conductive at high voltages, and especially if it's wet, so try and use a plastic pole instead. You're also going to need a flathead screwdriver, a wire, and some sticky tape. Finally, you'll need a metal pole that is dug deep into the ground. Tape the screwdriver firmly onto one end of your plastic long pole. Then attach a wire going from that flathead screwdriver to your rod that is dug into the ground. See that suction cup looking object connected to the cone shaped thing? That is your target, it is the positive inlet to the CRT. Now just simply push the flathead of the screwdriver underneath the suction cup and pop it off. You may or may not hear a popping sound when you do this. This is okay, it's just the capacitor discharging. If the CRT has not been turned on in a while, then you won't hear anything. Make sure the screwdriver makes good contact with the metal underneath the cup, and also make sure the screwdriver is tightly connected to ground, otherwise you won't discharge it. Also make sure you don't touch or even go near any metal part when doing this, or the energy stored inside the capacitor can go through you and kill you. Now that that's out of the way, the CRT is electrically safe, but there's still another big danger that we need to sort out before we can get the flyback out. At the tip of the CRT, there is an electron gun. You'll see a circuit board attached to it. This simply pops off. Here is the second big danger we need to make inert. The CRT itself is a vacuum, measuring in at 0.01 pascals. To put that in perspective, atmospheric pressure is about 100,000 pascals. This means that if you were to drop, shake violently, or accidentally crack the tube itself, there could be an implosion, sending glass fragments everywhere. To prevent this from happening, we need to safely decompress the tube. Now to do this, you're going to need to keep your CRT outside. You'll need something to hide behind, just in case it does implode. I'm using a garden chair. You'll also need a sharp object on a long stick. I'm using an iron pickaxe thing that I found. Wearing some kind of face protection like goggles or a paintballing mask is also a good idea to have. Now, simply, swing the sharp object firmly into the neck of the tube without slowing down. It does not take much force, so don't give it all you've got. That's just silly. You should hear the sound of air rushing. That's good. After a few seconds, it will stop and your CRT is now safe to handle. Unplug or cut all the cables going to the main circuit board. Then, you should be able to freely just pop it out. Here's the circuit board out of the CRT. And here's the flyback transformer, a golden treasure chest we've been looking for. Before handling the circuit board anymore, Get a stick and put some foil on the end, then locate the primary capacitors and flip the board over. Rub the metal foil all over the bottom of the circuit board. This should discharge any HV capacitors that might still be on there. And finally make it perfectly safe to handle. 
There's also many other goodies inside the CRT that you might want to take out, like the electron gun and all that magnet wire. There's also a giant speaker that you might want to use for things. Clamp the board down and whack on your soldering iron. There's going to be about 9 to 15 different pins coming from the flyback transformer. Use your soldering iron to desolder the solder and use the solder sucker to get rid of it. Keep doing this until the flyback transformer comes free from the board. Congratulations! After lots of hard work and perseverance, you've finally managed to get the awesome high voltage flyback transformer out of your CRT. Now, get ready to make a driver so we can make some high voltage arcs from this thing. Now, to power this thing, you don't just plug it into a wall outlet. Instead, you can just run it off AA batteries. You're going to need 8 of them, and it will drain pretty quickly, so I recommend using a PSU from a computer. Look online for simple ways of how to convert it into a power supply. It's pretty easy. Now, you can't just plug power up to this thing and expect it to work. What you need is something called a flyback driver. A flyback driver is a circuit that will take the power and make it so the flyback will work, basically. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to go into how it works. There's loads of different flyback drivers, such as the 3055, the 555 timer, the ZVS, MOF set, there's loads. What I'm going to show you in this video is a very simple circuit that I used called the 3055 circuit. It's very simple. This is not a tutorial on how to make a flyback driver, this is just how to extract one and get sparks from it. So I'll put a link in the description of where you can get the parts to make this and all the instructions of how to make this driver safely. Um, I'll put that link in the description. Now I've made it and I'll show you what the flyback does when the driver and the power is all plugged up to it. When attaching the driver to the flyback, you're actually going to have to wind your own coils around the exposed ferrite core. That's very simple. Just get a bit of magnet wire and sand off the ends. Changing the amount of turns on the feedback and the primary coil will affect the output voltage. I suggest starting with 7 turns on the feedback and 11 turns on the primary, and just mess about with it really until you get the best output voltage, but be careful not to over -volt it otherwise it will break. That's happened to me before, twice. So there we have our flyback transformer, fully wound, and here we have the driver circuit. It's a complete mess of wires, but all it consists of is a transistor with a diode, two resistors, and a battery bank. So now, when we wire this baby up, we'll have some sparks. Hear that really faint hiss? It's coming from this. Oh, I can smell that ozone. It produces ozone, you can smell it. Really weird. There we go. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You now know how to safely extract a flyback transformer from a CRT. And with the link provided in the description, you now know how to make a driver to run your flyback transformer. It's an awesome high voltage source that can be used for many projects. And I'll have some more videos coming up in the future, which I'll show you what I use it for. Thank you very much for watching, and please leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed it and if it helped you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, and see you later.